Tonight marks the beginning of Passover. Passover is, uh, starts with this meal, the Seder meal, where families come together and celebrate the exodus from Egypt. The story of the exodus gets told, not just told, but also experienced. The question comes up, what makes tonight different than any other night? And this is really the significance of, of this night. Something happened on this night that transforms the whole world. It transforms human cultures, and it also transforms the human understanding of who God is. Cultures tend to base themselves on oppression, on the powerful oppressing the weak. And this, in this respect, Egypt was no different than anyone else. Egypt built its temples and its palaces, its culture, on the back of these Hebrew slaves. And in the story of the Exodus, we hear this story and we experience this story. We put ourselves in the position of those who are enslaved and experience what it's like having been whipped by taskmasters, taskmasters, having to make so many bricks and living these very hard and difficult lives, temples that are devoted to gods who Egyptians looked to to justify this behavior. Well, the gods want us to do this. The gods say that this is okay to do, and so we are going to do this. Well, this event, this experience completely transforms this understanding of human cultures and this understanding of who God is. Here we see that the, he, the God of the Hebrews, the God that Moses helps us understand, is the God who stands with the oppressed. So it's not just us who are experiencing this story, it's also God who experiences this story of standing with those who are oppressed. And God works, judges this culture that is based on oppression as wrong and works within the culture to transform it. And it's a painful transformation for those who are oppressing, right? For the, for the oppressors, in order to give up everything that the culture is based on is a painful transformation. And so you have these 10 plagues and the 10 plagues culminate in the death of the firstborn son. Each of these plagues is to represent one of the gods of Egypt and how God of the Hebrews stands with the Hebrews and judges this oppression as wrong. And it culminates in the 10th plague, the plague of the death of the firstborn sons of Egypt. And here we see this transformation of the culture because the Pharaoh was a hereditary position. So the son, the firstborn son of the Pharaoh would take the place of Pharaoh when Pharaoh died. Well, here, that's no longer possible. And this is part of the painful, this points to the painful transformation of oppressive cultures. But when Egypt, when the Israelites leave, God says, don't go back to Egypt. Geographically, don't go back to Egypt and spiritually don't go back to Egypt. Well, we see here that Israel ends up spiritually going back to the ways of Egypt. They end up oppressing one another, the powerful and the weak oppress one another. And so God judges this as wrong and stands with the oppressed and says, don't oppress one another. Transform your cultures into ways of love and not ways of oppression. And the way that God does this is to provide and to forgive. After each act of oppression, God ends up forgiving these people and providing for their needs through manna, through water, through this whole spiritual experience God provides and gives. Could make excuses and say, no, you don't, you want to go back to Egypt? Go back to Egypt. That's not what God does. Forgives. And this is what God is leading us towards, forgiveness. I think the question of Passover is asking us what, how in today's world, in your world today, how can you experience yourselves as the ones who are oppressed and also the ones who are oppressors? What in our culture today 
needs to be transformed? What are the painful transformational processes that we might need to go through in order to be cultures that are based on love and forgiveness as opposed to cultures based on oppression? How might, how might we be Egypt today? I'd love to hear your comments on those questions. Let me know.